so my long journey through Doctor Who has now reached one of those tricky periods that I was not looking forward to. Uh, the last time I watched the remaining episodes of Season 17 was on UK Gold many years ago, and I seem to remember them being, at best average, at worst terrible. Which is why I never bothered to buy any of them on DVD. But on the plus side, it means I don't remember much about the stories, uh, so there'll be plenty of surprises in store. First up is The Creature from the Pit. And thankfully, it's not that bad. Uh, it just feels a bit empty, and there's not much that makes it stand out, apart from the obvious. Uh, the first thing to notice is that uh, K9 now has a new voice, uh, courtesy of David Brealey. Uh, he's nowhere near as good as John Leeson, obviously, uh, but at least he's not trying to do an exact impression, and he's just doing his own thing. And there's no reason why K9 can't have different voices. Uh, you can already change the voice in smart speakers, apparently. Uh, so this is really just a futuristic version of that. Uh, Romano also feels slightly off. Uh, this was the first story that uh, Lara Ward recorded in the role, and clearly she hadn't settled on her final persona. Uh, she's a lot more emotional here than she was in the last two stories, uh, which just adds to the odd feeling. Uh, the jungle scenes look good at least. Uh, they're obviously filmed in a special studio, uh, like the one in Planet of Evil, so they look a lot better than they would had they been shot on video in the regular studios. And the wolf weeds are an interesting creature, uh, like giant cabbages that somehow move on their own. Uh, I bet Tom Baker wanted to have one as a companion. Uh, the planet Chloris is rather barren, and there seem to be only two groups of people who live there. Uh, there's Lady Adrasta, played by Myra Francis, uh, who is in charge of the planet, or at least this area, uh, and has a palace and guards that all come with the territory. Uh, and there's also a group of bandits with awful Jewish accents, who rob anyone they can find, of any useful metal they have, and nearly do worse than that to Romana. It's by the same writer as Androids of Tara, uh, but that planet felt much more real, uh, with a lot more people around. Uh, with this one, all of the limitations are very obvious. I suppose I have to talk about Irato at some point. Uh, the actual big blobby part is decent enough, and certainly looks very alien, and not like any creature that we've seen on the show before. However, you can't get around the fact that its tentacle looks like a big green penis so it's hard to take it at all seriously, uh, especially when the Doctor, or rather Tom Baker, blows into it. Um, it's hard to imagine that was in the script, as it would surely be inappropriate, regardless of what the appendage actually was. Uh, they may have been better off making it look more like a Horta from Star Trek, uh, which is a similar non-humanoid species uh, that the regulars have difficulty communicating with. Uh, the translation device used to give Hirato a voice is a neat idea, uh, though it might have worked better to hire a voice actor uh, to give him a proper personality, rather than just the existing actors uh, reading all the lines with the least inflection they can. Unusually, the story seems to resolve itself uh, ten minutes into part four, with Adrasta killed and Irato freed. To fill up the remaining time, the threat of a neutron star uh, comes out of nowhere, and it turns out to be 24 hours away from destroying Cloris's son. If the Doctor had got there just one day later, there would have been nothing there. Uh, thankfully, Irato and the Doctor managed to get rid of the star uh, using some rather basic visual effects, uh, which is not surprising uh, given they must have spent most of the effects budget on Irato. Of the guest actors, Myra Francis gives a fine turn as a draster, uh, ruling through fear and greed, and convincingly desperate uh, when it seems the Doctor is about to expose all of her lies. And Geoffrey Bilden is wonderfully eccentric as the astrologer Organon. He would have made a great Doctor in a different timeline. And of course, there's at least two big finished plays that show how that would have gone. The DVD has a featurette about director Christopher Barry, uh, but it's not on the Blu-ray, so I haven't watched it. I had thought the Blu-ray collections contained all of the DVD extras, uh, but apparently you need to buy both if you want the lot. Who knew? Uh, there's also a 15-minute feature on the visual effects team who built the creature, uh, which is a lot of fun. Uh, and despite Matt Irvin trying to make himself the main character, uh, Morag McLean is clearly the star. And there's a short clip from Animal Magic, uh, with Tom Baker in character as the Doctor, talking about some of his old enemies. Uh, but you can hear the crew talking in the background, uh, which kind of spoils the illusion. Overall, it's pretty average, so I will give it 5. Next week, Nightmare of Eden. Uh, there's a spaceship, I think, and more dodgy aliens. Something like that. Uh, so subscribe if you want to see my thoughts on that. 
uh, or check out the link in the description to my playlist of all my Doctor Who reviews so far. And I'll see you next time.